It wasn't an algorithm. You need to understand that first. The images and sounds you were shown, the cryptic numbers that appeared in your recommendations, that was a signal, a tuning fork resonating with something already inside of you. You were chosen because you are one of the few who senses that the reality we see is just a fraction of the whole story. A beautiful, hypnotic, but fragmented echo. For months, you've been collecting those echoes, feeling their power without understanding the source. Consider this video the first translation of that source. This is not another theory or a guess. This is the blueprint, the very architecture of the philosophy you've been subconsciously drawn to. What you are about to see is the key that elevates you from a mere spectator of the mystery to an active participant in its unfolding. The puzzle pieces are in your hands. Now, let's begin to assemble them. Time does not merely pass, it disintegrates. But this unraveling does not happen in plain sight where the eye is trained to focus. It occurs in the shadows, in the peripheral corners of existence where no gaze is currently fixed. There is the time of the system, and then there is the time you perceive, and they never truly align. It is not a matter of a simple lag or a momentary delay. It is a profound fracture, a genuine epistemic asymmetry between the world unfolding and our ability to grasp it. Consider the mechanism of your own awareness. First, your senses gather raw data, frantically collecting light and sound. Then, a heartbeat later, your consciousness attempts to reconstruct it into a coherent picture. But in that infinitesimal interval, reality has not waited. Time, whether real or merely assumed, has already surged forward, leaving you behind. And it is precisely here, in this silent lag between reception and realization, that the cracks begin to manifest. Not in the spotlight, but in those peripheral zones we tend to overlook. In the precise language of neurophenomenology, we name this phenomenon perceptual desynchronization. The subject experiences the world with a structural latency, a built-in delay. But do not mistake this latency for a neutral void. It is not merely empty space or a harmless gap. It is an active field of instability a gray zone where the strict linearity of cause and effect begins to falter, and temporality, already a fragile construct, splinters into jagged, misaligned fragments. We are conditioned to believe that time breaks only under the weight of cataclysm. We imagine trauma, sudden crises, or vast cosmic disruptions tearing the fabric of the now. But we are wrong. Time fractures silently. It breaks in the blind, unmonitored threshold between the event itself and your observation of it. This is where the cognitive debris begins to pile up. The rough approximations, the severed segments of moments, the incomplete models of reality. Your mind, working frantically by inference, attempts to rebuild the collapsed structure but it builds with what it has, and often, what remains is simply not enough. And so, faced with a void, the mind invents. Neuroscience offers a name for this sleight of hand, post-diction. It is a shadowy process wherein your experience is retroactively modified, rewritten based on input that arrives mere milliseconds later. This is not a glitch. It is a trick, a survival algorithm honed over eons. The brain understands a terrifying truth. It cannot grasp reality in real time. Therefore, to save you from chaos, it simulates. But every simulation has margins. Where attention doesn't land, time behaves in an anomalous manner, like neglected files in a software system. To speak more formally, 
Wherever consciousness does not allocate its precious attentional resources, temporality behaves non-Euclideanly. It loses its narrative coherence. It ceases to follow ordinary metrics, twisting instead into a deformed perceptual geometry. One might compare it to the warped surfaces of Riemannian manifolds in topology, or perhaps to the theoretical models of temporal loops hypothesized in nonlinear dynamical systems. In other words, and to put it plainly, time falls apart at the very edges of our perception. And these fragments aren't empty. They contain inaccessible information. Residual events never integrated, temporal shards never indexed. The psychology of memory refers to this as non-operative nestic residue. They are pockets of data that exist in suspension, signifying nothing until something or someone reactivates them. But we must ask, how are they reactivated? How do these fragments reawaken? It is by friction, discontinuity, or an event of considerable scale. Even a different gaze, a tilt in awareness, can be enough. The anomaly doesn't form in the center. It forms at the periphery, in that unlived time that was ignored, filtered, or excluded for cognitive economy. Consciousness is inherently selective, but this selectivity yields zones of temporal blindness. We're not merely forgetting, it's that certain temporal flows were never integrated into our model of the real. Time, therefore, tears. Not everywhere, but where observation arrived too late. Where the influx of input outstripped the system's capacity to organize. A semantic overflow. When a channel is overloaded, it drops what it cannot process. And if that channel is you, time itself gets dropped. There's a condition known as temporal anomia, where the subject cannot name the sequence of events. It's not amnesia, but a failure to establish order. It's a symptom and a clue, revealing that time isn't a given. It's constructed, and every construction bears its blind spots. At a systemic level, time might appear to remain coherent, but at the phenomenological level, the level of felt experience, it is constantly subjected to localized micro-crises. These are brief collapses of meaning, gaps in interpretation, momentary implosions that no one registers because they last less than the duration of a thought. And yet, they happen. And inevitably, they accumulate. Still, every now and then, a fragment returns. It does not appear as a flaw, but as a calculated delay. It is an event that surfaces long past its window, yet it seems to carry its original electric charge. It acts as an asynchronous impulse that does not fit its context, but instead reveals the folds in the curtain. It is as if the system, in its desperate attempt to hide a fault line, allowed it to leak through by pure saturation. These returns do not obey causal logic. They are anomalous emergences, phase displacements, latent revelations of structures that were always present, merely dormant. These are not interferences. They are marginal persistences. They are temporal residues that survived the consciousness filter intact, like forgotten frames in a digital reel, or data never processed but still alive waiting for a context to emerge. That is why I tell you, do not chase the flow. Do not trust the rhythm that things impose upon you. There is another cadence, slower, more disordered, that pulses beneath the surface. That is where the unused portions of time settle, moments that had no witness, beats that never became history. Time does not collapse before you. It unravels at the edges, right where you keep not looking. See you in the next episode.